you all go ahead and stand as we sing page 542. Glory to his name. <laughs> It's good to see you all out this morning for church service. 
Glad you all can, a lot of you come out for Sunday school. Good to see you this morning. Brother Ronnie Jones is going to preach for us today. You remember to pray for him. Got a lot of, a lot of our people are sick. We got some traveling today, so you remember those people. Good to have you all out this morning. But let's remember one another in prayer as we uh, go to church together and keep people encouraged. And remember the ones that are on the pastor search committee. Remember them in prayer and pray for our church that we'll find the right person to lead our church forward. And this this time this morning, make sure you get you one of the pamphlets to see what's going on here at, here in the church of service. This Wednesday, we won't have any service. Uh, Thanksgiving coming up on Thursday. So you remember, though, that uh, there will be no Awana this week. So remember, remember those teachers and children that, it work in Awana. Several of them teach. A lot of them come in from work and go over there and teach. So you remember those people. We've got a lot to pray about in our church this morning. So you remember to do that this morning. Before we go any further in the service, I'd like to ask Brother Max Cron if he would to lead us in prayer. One other thing, uh, let me mention. Last week I I didn't mention it, but now you know most Baptist peop uh, people people uh, remember this. But we have offering boxes at each exit <laughs> as you go out to put your tithes and offerings in. Since COVID, we've uh, we don't take up offering during in the service. But remember to put your tithes and offerings in the boxes as you go out or come in. And so remember to do that. And I'll. I thank you for it. Those are the offerings that keep some missionaries that we we uh, supply. Remember them, and and so the offering and keep the church up. So you be diligent in doing that, and we'd thank you for it.
soul so unworthy and so scarred by sin but he did not despair he started over again and i bless the day he did not throw the clay still works with us and with each uh, passing day I hope we're getting a little bit better amen good to be here uh, good to uh, know that you're here but most of all I'm glad he's here amen and we come to worship him and have your Bibles with you turn with us to the book of Luke and uh, chapter 15 and uh, my first time to be with you but I found out I know some of you and uh, some of you know me, so don't hold it against me. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I did come out to the, the fellowship hall one time several years ago uh, at a men's meeting or something. I forget what it was, but uh, it's good good to be with you. I had a good drive over. I've retired. I uh, pastored in three churches over the years, uh, Union Baptist out of Wartburg, uh, Woodland Park in Oak Ridge, and 27 years over here at the North City at Kingston Pike. But for the last five years, I've lived at Madisonville over, well, actually, it's Notchy Creek. Anybody know where Notchy Creek is? Well, it's not your creek then, so <laughs> it must be mine. <laughs> it's about halfway between Madisonville and Teleco Plains, right there at the foothills of the mountains. A beautiful place, beautiful drive this morning to come over and be with you and to worship with you. Uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 15. I'll just read the first couple of verses here, and then we'll let God speak to us. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that he receiveth sinners? And eateth with him. Uh, publicans and sinners came to see him. In that group of publican sinners, there was also some Pharisees. 
We're all sinners, aren't we? We're just some of us being saved by the marvelous grace. But here, as, as Jesus is beginning to ministry and minister among those people, and, and things begin to pick up and get lively, and crowds begin to come, and they were coming out to see him, and I hope we come to see him today. I hope every time we go to church, we come to see him. Sometimes we come. people go to church for a whole lot of reasons, but we ought to always go just to, to meet with the Lord and to praise him and to worship him. People today, get they've always kind of got on my nerves a little bit. They start talking about why they don't go to church, you know, because of this reason or that reason or whatever. Things are bad. Most of the time it's because of relationships with somebody else. I don't like the preacher. I don't like the deacons. I don't like this and that. I found out that Jesus went to church with people that hated him. Amen. Because he wanted to go to church because that's what the Father wanted him to do. And even because there were those that were plotting to kill him, he still went to church with them. Now, there's nobody that mean to you, I don't think, to keep you away from church. So there's no good excuse for not going to church and to worship him. Ought to be the easiest thing in the world for us to do. Now, this is not the sermon. I'm just getting warmed up right now. But the easiest thing in the world for a Christian to do ought to be to go to church. I don't have to go to church. I get to go to church. You know what? And we get to have this wonderful time together to come and to join brothers and sisters and, and to worship together. Someone asked me how I like retirement. I said, I like it well. They said, well, how do you like going to all these other churches? I like it. I like to meet the family sometimes before the reunion. And so some of y'all I'll meet for the first time today uh, before the reunion one day over yonder, and we'll remember this time together. So it's always good to be in the Lord's house. Now, how many of you got one of these things you carry around with you? You know what these are good for? To get in you in to, to mess up a service. So always make sure you got it turned off when you get up to preach or, or to do anything else. Had a preacher do that one time. He said, now everybody make sure your cell phones are off about that time his begin to ring. <laughs> a preacher friend of mine, when these watches came out with these alarms on it, he got him one and played the Yellow Rose of Texas halfway through his meeting. It went off. And he said he pulled it off, and he, he said every time he punched it to turn it off, it got louder. <laughs> So those things, you know, the devil will use to get us sidetracked when we need to keep our eyes upon him and worship him today. And I hope we come to do that. I really do. Because, you know, Jesus knows why we're here. He knows exactly what's going on in your mind. Even right now, what you're thinking about, you know, if you're worried about the, the meal after a while or the football games that are going to be, what, he already knows exactly what's going on. He knew as he gathered, to, these people gathered together today, he knew what was going on in the minds of these men and women that were gathered there, just like he does today. He knows what's going on. I was thinking about this, and I, I, I've said this before. This is, I guess if I only had one sermon to preach before I died, it would be this sermon right here. It really was. I'm like this. You hear about that preacher that, uh, uh, had to be a Baptist preacher. He had a beagle walk that he just loved. He loved his little old beagle. And he'd had it for several years. But it started causing problems with the neighbor. The neighbor had planted a flower garden out back. And that became the favorite place for that little beagle to dig in. And so he got to going over there and digging her flowers up. And she was uh, getting kind of riled. You understand that? And so he didn't know what to do except, well, he didn't want to, but he decided what I'll do is I'll build a fence. And so he built a fence, put the little dog in the fence. Well, if you've ever had beagles, you know that didn't last very long. Can I just get down here? I uh, get down here with you here. And uh, he, uh, so he built this fence, and that, that worked for about two days. About two days, and that dog already figured out how to get across that fence, like beagles will do. And uh, so he thought, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to chain it. Don't want to do that, so he chained this little beagle inside the fence, and that worked great until the neighbor decided to get a rabbit. And she put a rabbit hutch in the backyard, and that little rabbit, and when it would come out where that little beagle could see it, it just went crazy. But he was inside the fence, chained up, and he was doing fine. But one day, he come home, and the little dog had got loose. 
Sure enough, he looked, and the little dog had the rabbit. He run, jumped the fence, grabbed the rabbit. Too late. Dinner and four o'clock. But now he got to think about this. The neighbor wasn't home. And so he run back over to the house. He throw that little old rabbit in the bathtub, run some water. He washed that rabbit up real good, got his wife, hair dryer, and blowed it off. He reached, looked out, the neighbor wasn't there. He propped it up in the shade, went back and got the hat. About an hour later, he heard this blood curdling scream. Well, he knew what it was, but being a good neighbor, he's going to act like he didn't. So he ran out the back door. She's standing there at that hutch, you know. He ran over to the fence. He said, what's wrong? What's wrong? She said, it's my rabbit. It's my rabbit. He said, is it dead? She said, you don't understand. It died yesterday, and I buried it in the flowers, and he's back. He's back. <laughs> well, now, that would be a surprise. But one of these days, we're going to be saying he's back. It's going to be a big surprise for a lot of folks. He's on his way back. And all we keep saying it could be any time, but I wonder if we really believe it could be any time. Because if we really believe that, we'd be more concerned about them folks that are lost out there. Lost is the worst word I know. You put the word lost with anything, it spells destruction. I used to go to the nursing homes quite a bit. At one time, I was going at least twice a week. And uh, it's, so, it's so hard to, to see folks who have, who have lost their, their physical abilities to get around. They're, they're, they're not able to take care of themselves. Their mind may be great, but, but, but their body is just, you know, because of an accident or, or whatever, they've lost the ability to do that. And it's tragic, isn't it? And then just the reverse of that, sometimes you see somebody who are healthy as can be, except they've lost their mind. A stroke or something has taken their mind, and they don't know what world they're in, and they don't know who their, their kin folks are, and it's just such a tragic to see that. It's a tragic to see folks who, who have lost, uh, they went into bankruptcy because of, of bad decisions. I had a friend that, that had a, a business in five different states, and through his decisions, his choices, he, he just lost everything. It's tragic. But the worst thing in the world is a lost soul. A lost soul. Think about that. And so as Jesus is looking at these publicans and sinners, sinners was bad, but publicans was even worse, you know. They were the ones that had sold out their their religion, their country, and everything. They joined forces with the occupied troops and government, and they were collecting taxes. Uh, now, they were Republicans. They weren't Republicans. My brother was down in Chattanooga, and he said his pastor got in a big way one time during the election and said, you're talking about Zacchaeus. He said, Zacchaeus had me come down out of that tree, still be an old Republican. But... <laughs> But I guess the Republican was a tax, well, Republicans are tax collectors, and Democrats are tax, Independents, all politicians are tax collectors, so it could have been, but he, he knew that there was sinners, and they were worse sinners. Sometimes we get the idea we're sinners, but we're not as bad as them. Well, all are sinners and come short of the glory of God. And without Jesus Christ, you're lost. You're lost. He's not one way. He is the only way. He's the only way. It doesn't matter who they are, what they've done, how nice they may look or anything else. Without Jesus Christ, if they die in that condition, they'll be forever lost. Forever. Forever is a long time, isn't it? No hope if they die without Jesus. And so Jesus looks at these people as they're gathered there. He began to tell stories. Now, I like stories. I guess you can tell that. I like to tell stories. Jesus began to tell stories. What did he say? Guys, he said, listen, a man had 100 sheep, and he come in one day, and one of them is missing. What's he going to do? 
He's going to leave the 99 and he's going to go look for that lost sheep. You know that some people are more interested in dogs and cats and cows than they are lost souls. They can lose a little dog and they'll run everywhere looking for it. Little cow get out, man, they're going to find him. They want him to walk across the road and run by that lost man and kill him. What a shame. Jesus said, this man would leave the 99 and he would go and he'd search and he'd search until he found that sheep and he'd bring it back and he'd, he'd call them together and say, rejoice with me. This sheep is lost, is now found. I was in Colorado years ago and I was driving down the road. I was, I was well, I was looking for a place to hunt. I, I was a... Uh, I had a tag to go antelope hunting. I was driving down the road, and, and just that, you know how you just, just catch something out of the corner of your eye, and I, I slammed on the brakes, and I stopped, and I backed up. And, and eastern Colorado is like a desert almost. It's very dry. And right here along the road was a fence, and there was a sheep just propped up against that fence, and it was just barely breathing. Just I mean, it was just at the point of dying. And way down there in the valley, I could see a, a pond and a green meadow all the way around it. All the other sheep was down there. And here this one sheep was up here. So I drove down the road. About the time I, there was a barn there, and I seen a guy out at the edge of the barn. I just wheeled in there, and I said, hey, you've got a sheep up here. And if, if you don't do something, it's going to die. It's about dead now. And he thanked me, and he said, it's, it's probably too late anyway. And I said, well, explain to me what that sheep is doing up here on the hill. And way down yonder, there's a pond, green grass, all the other sheep are down there. Here's what he said. He said, sheep just don't have any sense of direction. They, don't have, they have poor eyesight. They don't have any sense of smell hardly. They're defenseless. They just... And he said, what happens is a sheep will just keep his head down, nibble, 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 nibble. And if he doesn't have a shepherd or, or a sheepdog, it'll just get out and then it can't find its way back. And so it just roams around and till a coyote or starvation gets it. And I thought, wow, is that why the Bible says we're like sheep? <laughs> you know people that just get their head down? And just wander off. They wander off from church. They wander off from, from Christian people. It, it, it breaks my heart. I, I say these people are unintentionally lost. But here, here's what happens. They, they probably really mean to give their heart to Christ someday. They, they, I see it so often. Young people growing up in church in Bible school and go to church camp. And I've hauled them all over, you know. You see this. And then they graduate from high school and boom. Great majority of them are gone. They go off to college or they go off and find them a job and they get so involved. And, and many of the, I know many of these have been saved and, and, and they're going to be back and all this, but many of them, many of them never really had a life-changing experience with Christ. They've never been changed on the inside. And so what happens is they get, they get involved with life and they just nibble, 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 and they're out there on the corner. Lost. Lost. That's why I don't believe in Bible school. You know, I, it's wonderful to get together and worship together, but Jesus said it's more wonderful to go find a lost and bring them in. That's what gets the angels excited. That's what gets the Lord excited when you find one of those lost sheep. Unintentionally, but it doesn't make any difference. They're lost, and we have to find them, bring them home. Well, he didn't want the ladies to get left out, and so he said, this woman had ten coins. Now, I don't know if she did this every day or not. It seemed like that she might have. She counted her money. She like walked, counted her money every day. 
No. <laughs> we go back a long ways. I can pick on him. But what happened was she got up one morning. She had ten coins. What happened? It's gone. One of them was gone. She may not have cleaned house in a week, but she's going to clean house today. <laughs> She goes sweep and sweep. that's what that's what he said. She swept and swept till what? Till she found that lost coin. Why is it that money is so important to us? It's much more important to us than lost souls. You know how I know that? You let somebody bring something up in business meeting. What's the first question they'll be asked? <laughs> What's it going to cost? <laughs> when are we going to start asking, what will it be worth? You see, that's what the question ought to be. How is this going to help us win the world and to win the lost? I was talking about the nursing home. I went to the nursing home one, I used to do a Monday morning service in, over here at Lenore City on and I do a little Bible study and sing with them. They like my singing a whole lot better than my preaching. And you, you probably, if you, you probably would too, after I get through today. But anyway, <laughs> I got out of my car, and as I got out of my car, the wind was blowing. And I looked, and the wind had blew this dollar bill up against the bush. And I just reached over, pulled that dollar bill off, and threw it in the trash. No, I didn't. You know what? Put it in my bill case. Well, I went in that day, and uh, I changed my message, you know, just like the Lord. And I talked to them, a little devotion I had with them, about money growing on trees. Went real good. But how God just sends us things, sometimes unexpected. Sometimes even when we're not even asking for it, it just blesses. We take so much for granted. If you don't believe it, let the hot water heater go out on you. And you try to take a bath. Yeah. A lot of things we take for granted. But anyway, on Wednesday, we had a, a Wednesday service, and I usually schedule different guys to come in every Wednesday in the, in the area over there to do the Wednesday afternoon service. And they called me and they said, the pastor couldn't come. He said, can you come? I said, yeah, I'll be over in a little bit. So I went over. Well, as I walked in, this little old lady was laying there in, the, in one of them little uh, chairs that kind of leaned back, and she seen me, and boy, she lit up, and she said, and I walked over, and she said, uh, do you know that dollar bill you found out there on the bush on Monday? I said, yeah, I'm, I remember that. She said, well, I don't have any money, and the Lord said for you to give me that dollar. You think they don't listen? <laughs> I just got my bimfo out and handed it to her. She said, if you got some more, you need to give it. No, I said, no. <laughs> the Lord didn't tell you that. <laughs> well, now this is what I got to thinking. Now, now, the Lord just gives me some of these crazy stuff, thoughts, you know. But here's what I thought. That dollar bill had no idea who it belonged to. Did you? Hundred dollar bill or whatever. It doesn't know ten dollars. Doesn't know who it belongs to. It's just you can get it. And go to Walmart just as well as anybody else could. And there's a there's a multitude of people around us that don't know who they belong to. Are you with me? If they don't belong to Jesus, they belong to the devil. Yeah, every one of them. Every one of them. If they've never trusted, now I don't, it doesn't matter how good they are or how good you think they are or what they do or what they don't do, every one of them, if they've never professed Jesus as their Lord and Savior, asked Him to forgive them of their sins, they belong to the devil. Our job is to find out. It always bothers me to talk to people and they say their friend passed away, and I'll say, "Well, were they were they Christians?" I, you know, I, I never did ask that. 
I really don't know. Well, we ought to know. Time's running out. Eternity is at stake. And whether you're unknowingly lost or unintentionally lost, lost is lost. It doesn't make any difference. Then Jesus came to the prodigal son. Don't you love that story? Everybody knows the prodigal son. It's really the loving father who it is. We make it all about the son, but it's not about the, it's not about the son. This is is I want it and and so he gave it to him in a couple of days he just run off run away I don't know if we can if we can really understand that unless we've had a rebellious child and and, and I don't, I don't want to make anybody mad and I don't want to confuse you and I know that the scripture says to train up a child in the way that it should go, and when he's old, he'll not return from it. But now listen to me clearly. Some children will not be trained. Are you with me? Some children are so rebellious, they will not allow you to train them. It is just like two guys come on the job and and they're supposed to be trained. Some of them will take training and apply it. Some of them will not. Some of them just want a paycheck. And there is some children. God has left this to each individual, you see. And there are some children that take them to church, do all that you can, and, and preach to them, and teach to them, and pray for them, and cry over them. They're still going to rebel. Let me say this to you. When they leave, make it easy for them to come back. Amen. I've heard, I, I, I've seen it too many times. I've seen so-called godly people say, ah, they made their bed, let them sleep in it. No kid of mine, just get on out of here. Go on. No, no, no. That's not what God said to do. This old boy finally, uh, life turned out to be a mess. The Bible says he came to himself. What that really means is he came to his right mind. Now, he knew what he was doing. And undoubtedly, he was lost. Because it says two or three times, the father will say, this my son was lost. He was lost. He got to that age of accountability. You understand that, don't you? And when he got there, he said, I don't want these rules. I don't want this way of life. I'm doing it my way. It's, it's always amazing to me. <coughs> Kids that want to do it their way. I had a boy that, he really wasn't a bad boy, but he was kind of stubborn that way. He always wanted to be a Marine. And <laughs> he had a scholarship to go to play football. And uh, so he went off to college. I, I, I wouldn't, he wanted to sign right out of high school. And I said, no, you're, no. You go to college, you get a degree, and then, you, you know, make your choice then. Well, you know how that goes. He got hurt playing football, and they redshirted him. And so he was, I said, well, that's great. You got five years now to get four years of education in there, you know. Uh, well, he come in after that first year, and he said, I'm joining the Marines. I said, you're what? I'm joining the Marines. He always wanted to be a Marine. Now, this is what he said. I started saying, no, don't. He said, listen, I'm tired of people telling me what to do. 
<laughs> Had a grandson to come in Friday from the Air Force from basic training. I said, anybody told you what to do lately? <laughs> yeah, I went down to Lejeune when he graduated. When he, the first thing I asked him was, son, anybody told you what you had to do lately? <laughs> but when they leave, make it easy for them to come back. This old boy finally come to his right mind. And he said, oh, you know what happened? He began to remember some of those things he'd been taught. He said some of them will come to their minds out there some, somewhere along the way you know, when, when everything. Now, I'm always torn about these rescue plans and rescue missions and stuff because I always wondered if somebody would give that boy some clothes and a job and some food, I wonder if he'd ever went home. I, I don't know. I, I, I pray a lot about that. But anyway, he had nothing, and so he got to thinking about how it was with the fathers. And he went home. And it was party time. This my son that was lost now home. It was celebration. More, you know, we ought to celebrate more when somebody somebody comes home. I I I, I I, 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 well, I, I just get in the flesh, I guess. I get aggravated when people won't even come up and shake hands with them, you know. Just file out the door. Get out of here. You got a place to go, thing. But man, you know, it's celebration time when somebody rededicates or somebody gets saved. My goodness, what's wrong with us? There's another son here. And I believe he was just as lost as the first one. You don't have to leave church to be lost. You can hang around church all your life and still die lost. Are you with me? Because, and I think he was in on the whole plot the whole time. If you go back and read it, we miss so much because we read through it too fast. But it says this, this young boy came to his father and said, I want my, and it says that the father divided unto them. The older boy may have put him up to it. I have a twin brother, and some of y'all know him. He got me in more trouble. I have two older brothers. They got me into more trouble. I was the good one. No, <laughs> I got myself in enough trouble. But anyway. I believe he was in on it because the father divided unto them. He got his inheritance. He just didn't go anywhere. I don't know. Maybe he just hung around. Maybe, maybe he thought there would be more blessings or something out there. But he did not have the father's heart. He did not have the father's will. He did not have the father's character. Listen. There ought to be some family likeness. When you're a Christian, there ought to be some attributes. When the Lord moves inside, the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, you have to get better. You can't help but get better. He sees what's going on, and he would not as much as go in. Since somebody, he knew what was going on. I'm, I'm pretty sure now. The Bible doesn't say that. But he sent his servant in there. Here was somebody that had been around the Father all of his life. And unfortunately, he was lost. Didn't want nothing to do with it. All he could talk about was I. I never done this. I never done that. I never run off. I never wasted my substance. I <laughs> you know what he's saying? Hey, you can always find somebody that's worse than you are. You can always find somebody that talks worse than you do, that tells more lies than you do. That's easy. You can always look down the road and find somebody that's meaner than you are. 
You can pat yourself on the back and build yourself up, or you can put them down and make yourself look better. There's two ways of bragging on yourself. You can go around telling everybody how good you are, or you can go around telling everybody how bad somebody else is. The same thing. Unfortunately, lost. Had all the privileges. Had all the teachings of the Father. Had all the examples of a loving Father. He didn't want none of it. Now, I, I really believe this is where Jesus was heading when he started with these stories because those scribes and Pharisees were represented by this man. You see, they'd been in church. They were the church. But they were plotting to kill him right then. I, I want to tell you something. Just because you're a Baptist doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Some of the meanest people I know are Baptists. I, I'm, I'm telling you. I've been around long enough. I've seen enough of them. I was studying this one day. Here's what got me. Sheep was found. And boy, they had a party. They was rejoicing. The coin was found. The neighbors come in. They was rejoicing. That young boy come to himself, come home and Put a ring on his hand, a robe on, shoes on his feet. They had a party time. We don't have any idea what happened to the elder son. Jesus just stopped it right there. The father came out and treated him, pleaded with him, but he didn't say whether or not he came in. If he stayed out there. And I think there's a reason for that. And I think this is the reason. You closed your own story. Yeah. Of all the choices in life that we make, the only one that we really make by ourselves is where we spend eternity. Are you with me? You didn't choose where you was born. You didn't choose what family you was born into. You didn't choose what country you was born into. You didn't choose what century. My wife says I was 100 years too late, but it didn't make any difference. I didn't have any choice in the matter. I'm here now, and you're here now, by the grace of God. And the only real choice and the most important choice, we make ourselves. And that's where we spend eternity. And that's determined by what we do with Jesus. And until you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're lost. I'm not being mean. I'm just telling you the truth. If you cannot go back in your life and find a time and a place that you ask Him to forgive your sin and be your Savior, you're lost. That's not what I say. That's what the Word of God says. But it also says if you do that, you're safe. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the devil says. doesn't matter what the world says. doesn't matter what the Christian hierarchy says. It matters what God says. God says if you call upon Him, you'll be saved. In the very beginning, God said, and it was so. <laughs> I love that. God said, and it was so. And then in the New Testament, in Peter it says, we are born again by the Word of God. Now, Jesus paid the price on the cross. 
his blood was shed for. But the minute we obey him and believe him and trust him, God's word says you're saved. That instant. That makes me rejoice. And so if you're here today and you've never asked Jesus to forgive you, why go any longer? Why not do it right now? Finish your story. Now, there'll be more time to live and to carry on and things that are going to happen, but as far as eternity, that finishes your story, you see. That determines your end. And that's what's important. Would you bow your heads? Be prepared to lead us in the invitation this morning. I don't know where you're at in your journey. Boy, sometimes I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> but I know that along this journey, somewhere along the way, you have to trust Jesus as your Savior. If you've never done that, why not right now where you're at? Boy, I can pray for you. Your family can pray for you. This church can pray for you. Loved ones pray for you. Friends pray for you. But it's not going to happen until you pray for yourself. The words are not important. What it is is if you just ask him. That's important. I'm going to pray. And we're going to stand and sing. You make a decision, we'll give you the opportunity to share that. And we'll rejoice just like they did. Father, we love you. We're thankful so much, Lord, that you loved us. And you demonstrated so many ways, but most of all, when you went to a cross and died for our sins, so that we might have this opportunity just to trust you. So now, God, if there are those here today, Father, I just pray that they never, can't find that place. Boy, just nail it down even right now. Call upon you. Receive what you have for them. And we'll praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me? If you need to come, you come. And there's people here that will pray with you. I'll pray with you. Whatever. You come if you need to come this morning. <coughs> Come home. sing another verse in just a minute. Let me say this to you. What a tragedy it'd be one day you get to the portals of glory and they have turned you away and you remember this day when all you had to do was humble yourself before the Lord and ask Him. That's all. That's all. You see, it's not that easy. Well, it wasn't easy for the Lord, but He made it easy for you. So why? Would you go away lost? If you never did, why not do it? Why don't we sing one more verse? Just for you. I that makes sense.
Thank you for letting me come.